How do you hold police officers accountable to themselves or measure what they perceive to be personal success after they've been hired? I recently met with the police chief of uh, a fairly small police service, and we were talking about the hiring process, the recruiting process, and some of the recruits coming out of college these days. And he's come up with an idea that I think is actually pretty cool. According to this chief and some police recruiters, not just his, right across the entire country, there seems to be a few concerns here, okay? Now listen, if you are a new recruit or you wanna be a police officer, just take this and roll with it. Don't take this personally, okay? There seems to be, no matter where you go, in every line of work, a sense of entitlement. And the police service is no exception. That same entitlement with young people or students has made its way to the police service. Now, the chief isn't the first one to point this out, okay? You don't have to look very far. You just go to recruiting uh, websites or chat rooms, pages, social media accounts, and this sentiment is shared by recruiters everywhere. But what this chief has done for his specific police service, I think is brilliant. Before he offers the candidate the position of cadet in training, so to be a recruit, go to police college, to get hired by the service, he sits him down in his office and he asks him four questions. Why do you want to be a police officer? Fairly straightforward. Why do you want to be a police officer in this community? Where do you see yourself short term and long term? And how do you intend to build and foster relationships in the community? Very common these days. This doesn't happen with all police services, okay? Now it's easier with a small police service, of course, than if it's a large service with hundreds of officers being hired at a time. But these are certainly things that the police chief would like to know. And there are also things that the recruiters will get to during the hiring process. In fact, with most police services, the chief will step back from the hiring process because they don't want it to, for a variety of different reasons. But one of those reasons is they don't want it to look like they're trying to sway the results of the recruiters of the hiring process. What I didn't mention is that this police chief, when he's speaking to the candidate and asking these questions about the the, the career, what it means to them, what community means to them, is he records the entire conversation on video, and then he attaches that video to their file. There's a few different reasons for that, but one of the reasons explained to me is that if there's ever any problems or disciplinary issues with the officer down the road, the chief or command officer can simply play back the video to the officer and ask them, where did this go wrong? so full of positivity and drive in this video. Who could, this person who couldn't wait to complete the training process so they could help people and truly make a difference in the world. What happened? Have they served the community with honesty, integrity, accountability, respect, all the core values which are so important to them as they explained in their final interview with the chief? But also, and this is very important, I mean this, what happened? What changed and why? Was the officer involved in a critical incident and they haven't fully recovered or processed the incident mentally? Short-term or long-term effects of PTSD? Stress in their personal lives, which is affecting them at work and their head just isn't in the game? How can the service help them? Or at least, what should the police service be asking them? So I thought that was a great idea, okay? And I mean, truth be told, maybe the officer themselves, even if there isn't any problems, would like to see that video years down the road, maybe even at their retirement, to see what they were thinking, get into their frame of mind. But truth be told, it kind of make me sad at the same time because that officer, even if, again, nothing's wrong or there hasn't been any disciplinary issues, may also wonder to themselves what happened to that person that in that interview that was so full of life and truly believed that they could change the world. Um, you know, maybe there was just a very different stage in life and they wish they could go back to be that person who was so innocent in their way of thinking and their family members thought the same way of them and maybe their kids saw a change in them or their parents, whatever the case is. This happens, okay? Whether we choose to admit it or not, just dealing with negativity day after day after day, it does change a person. I'm nowhere near the, the same person I used to be. I no longer see the good in everybody, sad to say. I'm not going to make this about me, but that's just kind of the way it is. I suppose that this whole process would be very different than the process in the corporate uh, or private sector. This may seem very foreign to some to, be, uh, to have to go through something 
like that. But when you're going through the uh, the process to become a police officer, there's all kinds of different things that are put on video. One of the hardest things I had to deal with was <clears throat> during some of the scenarios, uh, basically they would play, uh, a scenario would play in front of you and then the video would stop and you have to continue the conversation or uh, talk as if you were the police officer dealing with the situation. And I never had a problem with that. I was always okay with talking and tactical communication, they say, as they call it. However, I had a hard time just with the video camera on me. I had a hard time acting normal or acting, uh, you know, I was just self-conscious with the video camera in front of me. Here I am talking to a video camera right now. It doesn't make any sense, but I just had a hard time dealing with that. I feel, I felt like it couldn't flow properly. Listen, folks, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Is this good? Is it bad? Would you go for it? Is it crossing lines? I would love to know your feedback. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you leave a comment, I read every single comment. I respond when it's appropriate to do so. So please, if you have something to add, uh, go for it. Thank you once again for watching this video. Be safe out there, look after one another, and perhaps we will see you again.